got straight through the French side into Britain, um, easy peasy as it was, you know, normally. So that was an interesting fact, but it was horrendous, and I, I don't know, maybe they should have foreseen this coming anyway because it was so bad before. Yeah, and it's, it's such a shame. I feel so sorry for, for people who've been looking forward to going on holiday for so long. Uh, Donna, many thanks to you. It's been good to talk to you, and uh, thanks to you as well. Uh, but there's lots of response today, and uh, clearly an issue that uh, means a great deal to people across the country. Uh, Continue for one and a half miles. But uh, in the meantime, make sure you download our global player. Traffic is getting worse. You will now arrive at 7.24. Programs along with a range of podcasts. Coming up at 10, Ben Kentish, but next on LBC, with Weekend Breakfast, it's Andrew Castle. Thank you very much. A very good morning to you. Saturday, July the 23rd. Coming up, the big thing that we have at our disposal to help us think about things differently, to bring radical change, is Brexit. Right, so we've we, we had all the debates on Brexit, but it's happened. I voted for it, I, and I think it's the right thing to do. So that was Rishi Sunak speaking to my colleague Andrew Marr and LBC earlier this week about the benefits of Brexit. But the UK's Brexit divorce bill from leaving the EU could rise to £42.5 billion, pounds, potentially adding billions to payments, the government says. So well, what do you make of that and why are we paying that money? Has it gone up, in fact? Uh, first, though, this. The summer holidays are off to a chaotic start with huge delays at the UK's busiest port. I'm LBC's Fraser Knight in Dover. And we'll get the latest from Fraser. Have you been caught up in the travel chaos? Who's to blame for the problems at Dover? Is it anything to do with the French interior minister, Damana? I was reading an article this morning that it might well be about that. Are we being punished for leaving the European Union? Is it fair to blame France or is it all our fault? On your radio global player and play LBC leading Britain's conversation this is LBC from Global's newsroom at 7 o'clock holidaymakers are being warned to expect delays today as millions of people try to get away for the summer holidays a critical incident was declared at the port of Dover yesterday following long queues our reporter, Fraser Knight, is there. This is expected to be the busiest ever weekend on the roads. The schools are closed for the summer. For many families, it's the first chance they've had to get away on holiday for years. The people coming here to the port of Dover yesterday faced agonising queues of up to six hours. And there's a warning today, could be just as bad. Southend Airport has told airlines it might be able to host some of the flights they have been forced to cancel. Some airports, like London's Heathrow, have put a limit on the number of flights as they're struggling with post-COVID staff shortages. Boris Johnson has told Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky the UK's support will not waver regardless of who becomes the next Prime Minister. He also welcomed news of a deal to get grain out of Ukraine. It's hoped the agreement can avoid global food crisis. A former advisor of Donald Trump says he'll appeal a verdict that found him guilty of not appearing to give evidence at an investigation into the Capitol riots. Steve Bannon now faces up to two years in jail for contempt of Congress, but his defense attorney says they'll reverse the case on a bulletproof appeal. But John Boer, the White House correspondent for Real Political News, says that's unlikely. There is reason for appeal in this kind of thing. It's, uh, it's just an another notch in uh, Trump's Two children have been diagnosed with monkeypox in the U.S. Health officials there say they're both in good health and receiving treatment. There are now 2,208 confirmed cases of monkeypox in the U.K. More than half of those are in London. And England will play Sweden in the semi-finals of the Women's Euros. Sweden beat Belgium 1-0 last night. The last four match in Sheffield on Tuesday will also be shown in front of a 5,000 fans in London's Trafalgar Square. The weather, thick cloud and outbreaks of heavy rain will spread into the north and the west, staying dry and warm in the southeast with spells of sunshine and a high of 24 degrees. From Global's newsroom, I'm Lottie Morley. From Global, leading Britain's conversation with Andrew Castle. Uh, three minutes past seven. Good morning to you. We'll talk about a whole load of things later on. Take through the newspapers. This uh, grain deal between what well, brokered with the United Nations, Turkey. Um, Russia and Ukraine. That's that's very interesting. Could be very important. I mean, I wonder if it's a first step in the right direction for anything with this uh, terrible invasion. 
In 300 yards, keep right to continue towards Tans Lane, A355. To this summer getaway. I mean, it's enough to make you stay at home, isn't it? And just take the kids out of school in September, October. Just, just take them out. Nobody's going to punish you for it, right? Just take them out of school and go when you might actually be able to travel. I'm looking at scenes now from Dover, just horrific. Don't know what it's like this morning. Um, actually, no, they are live shots. Goodness me. Well, we've got... Uh, Keep right. ...down there to tell us what the reality is of trying to get out of this country and get into France. Uh, obviously, reporter Fraser in Dover. Morning to you. What's it look like to you? Well, Andrew, this was always going to be the busiest ever weekend on the roads. The schools, of course, are closed for the summer. For many families, it's the first chance they've had to get away on holiday for years. But people coming here to the port of Dover yesterday, well, they faced agonizing queues of up to six hours and there's a warning that today could be just as bad here's some of those who were caught up in the queues so we've been in a queue for about seven and a half hours well it's been all right because of the saving grace of being able to get out and go to the toilet i mean we got stuck near morrison so that was handy two and a half hours we've been waiting just thinking about you know, you've got 50 yards you stop for 20 minutes it's been ridiculous really in a quarter of a mile, at the roundabout, take the first exit onto the M4 slip road to London, Heathrow Airport. ...to build. Police are here, ready in case there's a repeat of yesterday. I've seen some of them managing the, the queues of the, on a roundabout just outside the port already this morning. Because, Andrew, even at nine o'clock last night, as I got a train here to Dover, lorries were still nose to tail on the M20, some 30 miles away. And as for hotels in Dover, well... There was no room at the inn. It seemed many families had given up queuing for the night and booked themselves into B&Bs, perhaps ready to start again today. One owner told... In a quarter of a mile, merge onto M4. ...including families who she claims then spent the night in cars. Now, Duke Bannister, who's the Port of Dover's chief executive, was extremely apologetic about the issues yesterday. I need to say that I am really very sorry. We should not be in this position. We have, we have been planning for this day, this morning, for the last several months. We have installed in the port new infrastructure to be able to handle this. We've trained up more people. But what was it that caused such chaos, Andrew, on a day that they've been planning for for so long? Well, bosses here said that French border officials, who, by the way, check passports on this side of the channel, they said they didn't send enough staff for the numbers they were expecting. France, though, says it was planning to send more on the Euro Tunnel had delayed them. That, though, was apparently an incident that happened hours after the queues had started to form. Well, one French politician, though, has said the delays and the gridlock that we've seen here in Dover will become the new norm, and it's because he says it's Brexit that has meant more checks are needed before families and freight can leave the UK and head for the continent. Yeah, we were all very, very naughty for, for, for going for Brexit uh, as a country. Fraser, thank you very much indeed. You'll be busy there today and uh, reporting for LBC Fraser night in Dover, six minutes past seven. Peter Allen, LBC's correspondent in Paris. Hello, Peter. Good morning. Good morning, Andrew. They're having a crack at us because we voted Brexit. It's got to hurt. Yes, this happens all the time, uh, whether it's official dispute, whether it's the AstraZeneca uh, issue, uh, the coronavirus, Liverpool football fans, or whatever, or Northern Ireland Protocol, the general view of the current uh, Emmanuel Macron administration is that Britain brought all these uh, problems uh, on itself because of uh, Brexit. Uh, Britain is now viewed as a third country. Uh, it's uh, a third country border now, uh, Do uh, Dover Calais, one of the most uh, important trade routes in the world, and of course one that uh, normally welcomes millions of uh, holidaymakers and travellers uh, every single year, particularly at this time of year and during the summer. And uh, again, the French would say if it was a, uh, if it was a border with Spain or Belgium or Germany or other EU nations, things would be a lot smoother. But because of all these uh, new protocols which have been brought in post-Brexit, um, uh, this is the problem. I think you mentioned Andrew there, Gerald Domina, who's a very ambitious uh, interior minister over here, somebody who's tipped as a future president. He's somebody who's making hay over these uh, disputes, uh, whatever the disputes are, and uh, suggesting, as you say, Andrew, that uh, Britain has brought it all on itself. Is that something that you see in, from the Elysee Palace? I mean, is, is Macron and Dominant and, and, and others, are they anti-British? I mean, obviously, um, and anti-Brexit. Are they punishing the UK? Do, do, do these sorts of scenes gladden their bitter little hearts? Or is that, not, is that not accurate? Well, it's difficult, really. I mean, it's, it, it, 
it really depends on who you're speaking to, I really, I, I really think, Andrew. I mean, I think there's certainly other reasons <coughs> why uh, there may be chaos at uh, Dover Calais this morning and, and indeed yesterday, and uh, they are the kind of reasons that we, we, we've seen chaos uh, in Britain. Uh, everything from the uh, boiling hot weather recently to uh, strikes over the other lots of uh, transport strikes. Uh, there were lots of issues with lots more people travelling because uh, they were turning to normal. Uh, yes, the coronavirus pandemic still there. People who travel the streets, of course, have been lifted. So there's all kinds of uh, issues there. There was mention of this technical problem that I know French. Uh, so they go to one and say, you blame it on a technical problem. But overall, if we look politically, we certainly have a president who once described Brexit as a crime. Somebody who's never really apologised for, for saying that. And uh, politically, there is an argument that we have a uh, fiercely pro EU administration here in Paris, which all politicians support the EU, but the, the kind of administration does. And that if there is any opportunity to punish those who were uh, responsible for Brexit, uh, they might use it. Maybe. It's not, but Andrew, it's oh, visible. Okay, well, we'll you know, having an argument what we do, isn't it, Peter, sometimes, so, or at least a conversation. Peter, thank you, Peter Hill. Um, correspondent in Paris. Ten past seven, we're talking about the delays in Dover. If you're caught up in that, 03456060973, what's the reality? Have you got news? Have you got water? Have you got information? Are you still piling into the port and hoping to get away today? If you want to get your voice on the radio, you're welcome here. 84850 is the text. Peter Wilding is with me, chairman of British Influence. It's a cross-party organisation that believes Britain is better off uh, in Europe. Uh, Peter is also an author of What Next? of the word Brexit. Did, sorry, Peter, good morning. Good morning. Did you invent the word Brexit? I invented the word Brexit. Have you got that patented? Have you got, have you, you know, protection on that or something? I've been living a billionaire lifestyle now, if that was the case, Andrew, but unfortunately you, can, you can't copyright a word. Um, and, and, and Peter, I mean, the description I've got here, here for you is a, a, you know, a cross-party cross organisation that believes Britain is better off in Europe. We are in Europe. Look, the point, I, I was fascinated by your discussion uh, earlier on, your own point of view, um, as you described, oh, let's just blame all the French on this uh, conversation just had with Peter in Paris. Well, isn't this all resentment by France? Uh -huh. Andrew, may I just tell you to shut up? Because this is the kind of nonsense that houses up and down the land and now saying, oh, let's just blame the French. Of course this has got to do with Brexit, but not just Brexit, not just leaving the European Union. It's a different thing. We could leave the European Union and still be in a situation where none of these cues existed. The problem we have is that we left the European Union, but we also decided to leave the single market. And if you leave the single market, you become Serbia. You become Romanian. No, you, you, you become a non-EU country. Sorry, Romania is in the EU. And you are a third country. So just let me tell you one fact. And you can read, everybody, every one of your listeners can read in the page today that the queues were six hours long. The French had 50% of their passport boots open. So, if they had them fully occupied, then that queue would be down to three hours. That is the how many, how many, um, how many boots are there? I don't know. But so, you how do you, so how do you know that only 50% were open? Because in the Times this morning, that was the fact that right. uh, was described. Okay. Right. Well, before you tell me to shut up, I think maybe you better get your facts right. Because there are 10 booths and there were four French officers on duty on Thursday morning. That's 40%. Four, that's Why do you suppose there were only four French duty officers available from the Police Haute Frontier, the PAM? You will remember back at half term, queues at border control in uh, the United Kingdom. The UK border force couldn't man all of our border posts. You will remember, ba you remember baggage carriers delays on the carousels because people couldn't get enough workers to do the job. This is a, this is the price of Brexit. Now you may in two miles to junction three, take the A three one two exit to Harrow Hayes. You are going down a line of attack. Let's blame other countries for the decision we made. No matter whether all of those booths were full, Andrew, 
there would have still been queues, and huge queues at Dover. So you, you, do you think this was a Gallic go slow? Is it a, pun no. is it a punishment beating for us? This is the price of Brexit. So what do you, what, what, what do you want to do about that, Peter? I mean, you know, what, 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 what on earth do you want me to do about that? I mean, I sit here as somebody that voted to remain in the European Union. Oh, no. You continue to have there a There is a solution, Andrew. There is an easy solution. Have another vote. We're going to have to get it done no. at midday. Wait. Yeah, we're going to get these people out of Dover. The solution is we could have left the European Union, but we did not have to leave the single market. We left the single market because the government decided that people had voted to end free movement. If you end free movement, yeah. you are a third country, you show your passport. And you, you, and you Peter, don't mind any of this and you have no sympathy whatsoever for anybody that is stuck in queues with no lose, water. I have any sympathy for them. Oh, you do? Oh, you but, do. I want them, but I want them to, I want you and the media to say, by the way, this is to do with Brexit. It's not because the French are kicking about fuss and wanting to... Really? Uh, are, you, are you well-travelled, Peter? Are you well Very well are you like, Literally, I've just come back from Ukraine. Are you well-travelled are you well -traveled enough to know that if you flip... In a quarter of a mile, at Junction 3, take the A312 exit to Harrow, Hayes. Do you need to check um, you know, the COVID checks, the visas, the finances of people going into France? Four booths out of ten, then they, then they blame it on tech problems. You sound, Come on, you sound like Nigel That's, Farage here. No, you, 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 you sound like... Exit at Junction 3. I've been travelling around Europe constantly. I've been travelling the globe all my life, mate. You're a little bit naive, aren't you? Bit naive. In a quarter of a mile, at Cranford Parkway Interchange, take the fourth exit onto the Parkway, A312. Taking a punishment beating from those elegant, sophisticated French. You love it. <laughs> bye bye. See you later. That's Peter Wiley. What do you think? If you're stuck in Dover, what do you think? Um, do you think that having only four booths open was, in some sense, retribution, or do they just not have enough staff? Why, if they just don't have enough staff, have they? Um, do they blame a tech problem on the Euro Tunnel? I mean, listen. Anybody that listens to this program knows full well that when things don't work from passports to driving licenses um, to, to God knows what is working in this country, it's a very small list. I am the first to say this is absolute nonsense. Why isn't it working? Ask the question. But this one seems pretty clear to me. Now, where is the problem? Six hour queues, kids running up and down the M20, no lose. I mean, it might be our problem. I don't know, but it appears to me that this one is that the... Exit the roundabout onto the parkway. They were warned and knew. So, look, there's no skin off my nose, but don't start shouting that I'm stupid. Make an observation if you will. How dare, Peter, eh? Naughty Continue on the parkway for one mile. Lottie Morley's doing the news. Hello, Lottie. People are being warned to expect delays on the roads as they try to get away for the summer holidays. Rishi Sunak says he would put the UK on a crisis footing on day one if he becomes Prime Minister. And Boris Johnson has assured Ukraine support from the UK will continue with a new PM. The weather, rain and cloud for the north and west, dry and warm in the south and a high of 24 degrees. LBC Travel, I'm Claire Sharp. In Earls Court, the A4 Cromwell Road remains closed in both directions between West Kensington Station and Earls Court Road. That's because of the ongoing investigation work after an accident, several buses on diversion, and it's also quite heavy on the surrounding routes. In Upper Edmonton, on the North Circular, it's partially blocked eastbound between the A10 at the Great Cambridge Junction and the 4th Street Tunnel. That's also because of an accident. On the tubes, the district line has no service between Earls Court and Kensington Olympia. That's because of faults on the track. And on the trains, because of further strike action today, there is a reduced service on Greater Anglia, heading from Liverpool Street towards Norwich or south of Victoria, and no service across the rest of the network. This is LBC. EE's Full Fibre is here. New broadband that can handle anything. And whatever you think that means, time to buy a zillion and dip it in chocolate. Because this broadband connects 100... In a quarter of a mile of Wagoners Roundabout, take the second exit and stay on the parkway A312. 18.3% UK availability. Check coverage at ee.co.uk. When you remember this year's holiday, will you think of the waves gently lapping on the shore? The sun setting over rolling hills. 
Or will you remember being bored out of your mind with a flat tire, waiting for a recovery truck? One in five motorway breakdowns are caused by tire problems. Before you set off, check your tire... Pro Exit the roundabout onto the parkway. Are you looking for Continue on A312 for one and a half miles. ...with British Airways. We're recruiting new members in our baggage handling and ground operations teams, where you'll be doing vital work to ensure every journey runs smoothly and safely. New joiners receive a £1,000 sign-on bonus, as well as world-class training, career development opportunities, a competitive salary, and a staff travel scheme. Bonus terms and conditions apply. To find out more, visit ba.com slash careers and apply now. I reckon 13's a lucky number, because now you can get award-winning Sky Glass from just £13 a month. You'll also get Sky TV, free, and Netflix on us. And instead of £39, it's just £13 a month for the first three months. See? 13 is looking for some. Head to sky.com today. £10 up from fee. Subject to status and credit check. £13 per month for 43 inch Skyglass TV and 48 month interest free loan. £26 per month for Sky TV and Netflix from month 4. All content stream requires broadband minimum speed 10 megabytes per second. 18 plus. UK Isle of Man Channel Island only. Terms apply. This is LBC with Andrew Castle. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. And a very good morning to you. It is Saturday, July the 23rd. We're talking about Dover, 20 past seven. Uh, why didn't you hit the dump button the moment that guy told me uh, told you to shut up, says Archie, who's in Inverness. Well, Archie, you know, I, I don't mind hearing a point of view. Um, I'm pretty offended if you um, just, just we all started insulting each other. I, you know, I'm trying to work out what's going on down down there in, in Dover. If you've got four people turning up, I don't care whether they're British, French or anything else. If you've got four people turning up and there are ten boots, and if there is a go-slow, and we all know a go-slow can be manufactured, let's find out about it. Um, if there is an anti-Brexit, anti-Britain uh, feeling after this country decided to leave the EU, not everybody. 2016, uh, and if this has something to do with it, we'll investigate that. We're just trying to get to the bottom of the story. But I mean, what I do know is that if you've had warnings and then you still screw it all up, but listen, we've, we've had the same thing here in many, many different fields. You've got six hour queues, kids running up and down the M20, no lose, water, um, just trying to get through Dover. What are the reasons for that? Um, so I don't think there's any particular need for there to be a huge insult about that about this. I'm just trying to find out what's going on. French border police seem to be to blame for it because of inadequate staffing levels. Where are they? This is the first weekend of the British summer holiday. They knew it. Perhaps they don't care. Perhaps we're being punished for, for leaving the EU. It's just a, just a thought. It, it seems like a plausible one to me, but, but I might be wrong. And I'd hate to be involved in that. And um, Archie, thank you for that. Alison says, uh, please spare a thought for the people of Dover. They can't move around, get to work. They can't um, go to school, shop, all of it. The businesses are suffering terribly because no one can go in or out of the town. And uh, there were some carers the other day, including those offering palliative care, who have to sort of walk, walk as much as they can. If, if they can't drive, they need a lot of equipment. A lot of people are not taking the medication that they should be. Uh, when they're taking home visits, um, so there's no one to hold their hand at a time when they need it held. It, it must be absolutely horrendous. If you're local, it'd be lovely to hear from you. 3456060973. Uh, quick look at the uh, quick look at the newspapers. Uh, holiday chaos. Daily Mirror. Uh, France accused over six hour delays at poor airports. Round as Brits head for breaks. Uh, I turned to the Sun newspaper. Paddy and Christine. We kept our split secret for over a month and. Uh, Daily Mail this morning. Wish you weren't here. Families hit by the travel chaos. Um, moving on to the Daily Telegraph. Trust telling France to fix the holiday travel chaos. Paris blamed for six hour queues. Guardian Trust promised could bring bonfire of rights. Um, this is um, hundreds of laws covering employment and environmental uh, protections could disappear overnight if Liz Trust becomes Prime Minister. <clears throat> After she pledged a 15-month deadline to scrap all remaining EU regulations, uh, related subject coming up actually. Do you know what the uh, Brexit divorce bill is? I don't actually know what it pays for, but it's risen hugely. Voters back trust beats Starmer, Daily Express, Times newspaper this morning. In 300 yards, turn right.